I mean, I almost sold my soul to the bank and had them in charge of my life. That's terrifying to me. And weirdly, God was looking out for me because I, I was chomping at the bit to get this done. And there kept being delay, delay, delay. Like God was like delaying it on purpose. And then finally I'm laying in bed at night. Like, what the hell am I doing? Oh my God. I like, they're going to run my life, you know? And I was, and I finally was like, no, no, I can't do this. So I just, I went and got, I got pulled money out from my house. I'm like, cause I don't have to answer to anyone. I can do whatever the hell I want with it. There we go. Fixed. Hey everybody, I'm here with serial entrepreneur and author Chelsea Hewsome. You guys are in for an amazing episode. She's going to break down her business journey as well as some of the big adversities that she's faced in life and how those have made her better. Check it out. Chelsea Hewsome, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for driving all the way up. Yeah, my from, pleasure. From the Denver area. Yes, the burbs. You know, we got introduced <laughs> like a year ago. Yep. We have a very great mutual friend that our company's done some work for. She's mm -hmm. become just a great friend of, of the family and the company. And um, you've known her in the professional industry. Yep. And she's like, you guys have to meet. And it was yeah. all over Spain. It was. Yeah. yeah. She knew I was a Spanish teacher back in the day and that you do all these amazing trips. And yeah, she's like, you need to meet him. Yeah. yeah. And then we couldn't get connected forever because we're busy, crazy, caffeinated entrepreneurs. Yes. <laughs> Thank God we're caffeinated. I don't know if that's, is that good though? Yeah, we need don't, it. Do you naturally have the energy without caffeine or does the no. caffeine create And I don't even you? know, actually, if I, I truly wake up thinking of coffee. I don't know if it actually makes me wake up. I think it's just the mind, the mental thing of it. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. So, so start with your story. Like we've just met in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we're, we're new yeah. friends. We chat on the phone a few times yep. and love your energy. Love your website. You've Thank got a book you. coming out, podcast. You know, you're doing a lot for, for moms and entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. women in the business space. And, and I know you've got a, an amazing story and you've overcome a lot. So mm -hmm. just like, take me back. Like, where yeah. does your story start? How did you get here? <clears throat> Man. Well, so right now, I guess I'll start there and then I can kind of go back. So right now um, I own a construction company in Denver. Um, started that in March of 2020. Cause why not? You know, Good while time. I was working another full-time job, my kids are at home. My husband's at home. It was absolute chaos. Um, but it's really, oh man, it's just grown into something so amazing. I adore my employees. They're so good at what they do. They took a chance on me and we've really been able to build something really cool. So we do um, concrete scanning. It's called ground penetrating radar. And then we do core drilling. So that's the circular uh, cutting and floor wall on commercial sites. So mainly we work with like electricians and mechanical companies and then general contractors. So total niche. I love it. I never thought I would be in construction or an entrepreneur and like love it all yeah. and learned a lot the hard way, a lot of late nights, tears in my yeah. office, like what's happening. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, um, wrote my first book. It's called real vibes only unapologetic confessions of a hot mess mompreneur. It's just meant to be feisty, fun, real. And it really, it's just, it's a bunch of short stories that, of uh, things I've really overcome in life. Some are really traumatic. Some are kind of in the middle, some are lighter, but it's really just to show people that you can have a voice, you can share your story. And I really hope it just inspires people to feel seen or connected because one thing I know for sure in the human experience, we all go through really hard times, like talking to people that we all go through it. Right. And so I just want, and I've been in, been there. And even recently too, where I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is rough. And you feel like it's going to break you at the time, but it's to give people hope when you're in it, you know, you got to learn how to take care of yourself and dig out of it. And you will come out stronger on the other side, but it's, and when you're in it, it's hard to see that. So I'm hoping to inspire people. I hope they laugh and cry and they're like, oh my God, this lady's crazy. Some of the stories I'd say, you know, but, I, but I want, I just want to put it out there and, you know, be real and not, I'm not perfect at all. I'm so far from it, but I try my best. I try to be a good person and I do my best and I learn and I make mistakes, you know? So, um, that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm also doing a lot of speaking, um, and, 
Um, I'm going to start a podcast this year in my quote free time. I just need to get a few things in order, but yeah, I'm excited just again to, to hear people's stories. So March of 2020, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you're launching a construction company. Yeah. What does February of 2020 look like? Cause you said, I've never done this before. Don't know what I'm doing. What, what were yeah. you doing prior to that? Were you an entrepreneur? Were you in business? So that's interesting. So this is, I have a Spanish degree and a broadcast journalism degree. I thought I wanted to be the next Barbara Walters. And then I was like, oh, well, you work, make 20 grand and work nights and weekends. That sounds horrible. <laughs> so I, I had moved to Denver to do my internship and I did my internship in radio and I stayed here. And then I was like, okay, well, six months have passed. The loans are coming due. I need a job. So I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. So I, I got a um, job as a temp, like receptionist downtown in Denver. And I just go to different offices. And let me just tell you, I'm from South Dakota, moved here. There's a lot of one-way streets. It's not good for someone from South Dakota. Like I went down one-way streets the wrong way so many times. I'm like, this big city is just crazy, but I love it. Um, so I did that. And then one day the owner of that company was like, Hey, my sister's hiring her company is hiring. Um, she's from Minnesota. She, she's like, Oh, fellow Midwest gal. She likes you already. So I, um, that was a trade show and experiential marketing company. So I actually, they hired me. I became the receptionist there. And then I actually worked my way up through the company for, I worked there about five or six years. And then I just started realizing I didn't feel like I was doing something worthwhile with my life. And I just was, it was really stressful. Like I remember going to yoga one day with my cell phone next to me and like terrified because I had a show in New York and I was, the truck driver was late and blah, blah. I was just, I was like, really, is this my life? This sucks. Um, so I quit my job. I got my master's in education and then I became a high school Spanish teacher for 10 years. So well, cool. I started in middle school three years and then I finished in high school. I did that for 10 years. And then one day a kid called me a fucking waste of space. And I was like, tell me how you really feel. And he did not say it in Spanish either. I would have actually been like, even try. Okay. he could have gotten some extra credit or something. I know. Like you if know? you're going to insult me, do it in Spanish. So I was like, and that was like September 18th. I remember I look over, I'm like, Oh my God, this year is going to be rough. And it was, it was rough. And I was like, I don't love this anymore. I need to get out. And I, so I applied for all these jobs. No one called me. I'm, I was like, did I pigeonhole myself with being a teacher? Like I personally would hire a teacher in a second. They're hard workers. They handle a million things. Like, but I got zero calls. The only job I was offered was an office manager of a hardscape company. So the pavers, uh, and that was commercial construction. So I took that and honestly, I got trained like two days and then I was doing like certified payroll, which is the bane of my exist was the bane of my existence. I'm like, why God are you torturing me? You <laughs> like, don't seem like a payroll girl. It's horrible, <laughs> but like certified payroll is like the worst thing ever. And I, and I didn't get trained. So I learned the hard way about getting into construction, but I mean, it's good. Cause that got me into the world of construction. So when I started my company, really, I had a lot to pull off of a lot of knowledge to pull off of that. I had learned the hard way earlier. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I feel like I'm, I've reinvented myself so many times in completely different things, but when I'm a true Gemini, when I get bored, it's, it's like, I'm bored now and I need to change now. I don't, I can't just go on in a job or something I don't love. I, I taught Spanish. It was just after school. It wasn't oh, yeah. full time. I was employed by the school district. You know, yeah. Two, three hours a yeah, week. Yeah. Like an after school thing. Yeah. The kids. Love They're the kids. so great. Love the Spanish. I never had, I had elementary, so I never had any kids so throw cool. the F word. Uh, but a couple yeah. kids, you know, were there for babysitting and the parents yeah. Had, yeah. had the agenda. I couldn't stand the parents and the politics of the school. Yeah. And then I hung that up. You know, a while ago, it was probably a decade ago that I was doing that. Yeah. And so. like phones and, you know, they're trying to play video games on their computers. Like it's technology and social media has created really a difficult situation for teachers. Yeah. yeah in a story, uh, I talk about a chapter of my book. I talk about, I had nicely asked a student to put a phone away and then he started screaming the F-bomb at me like 30 times. And me and the other students were like, Oh my God, what's happening? And I had to get him escorted out and he got kicked out of my class and, and out of school for a few months. <clears throat> but it's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I was very nice. Like, hi, can you put your phone away? I, you know, I'm like, I don't know what I did to deserve that, but we're like in class. Can we actually do what we're supposed to be doing? Yeah. It's, it's really, I, I have young kids, so we need good teachers, but like 
so many of them are unhappy and they're treated ho- horribly. But where, but where are the parents? Like if my son or daughter know. said that to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this boy, ima- his mom had passed away that. and I, okay. I get there's like trauma involved too, but yeah. you can't just, if someone says something nice to you, you can't just like completely snap on them and lose it. Right. I mean, it, it's one thing if I was yelling at him, Yeah. but I just like, Hey, <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. Now you just get subcontractors. Exactly. To you. <laughs> Actually, no, they're pretty <laughs> no, nice. Are they cool? They're pretty nice. Yeah. And I work in my house with my dog. So, you know, I just talk to myself a lot. <laughs> So you're, so you're four years in, you know, yep. you went all in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, what, what have been some of the surprises, things you didn't expect mm-hmm. that, that you kind of learned the hard way, right? Cause we were talking yeah. about that offline, learned a lot the hard way. Mm-hmm. And then you just mentioned it again. Yeah. I mean, I, I've learned, I'm actually good at this and I, I'm really organized and I really am a hard worker. So it's kind of cool to step into it and actually be the boss and own my time. Right. But, um, one thing that I was not good at the beginning, now I'm better is I have bankers, insurance people, and like some other different companies. Hey, emailing me, Hey, you know, you want to get coffee or lunch? I want to just see, learn about you, see how I can support you. And while that's nice, I don't have time for that. Like, I just don't, I'm not switching insurance. I'm not switching banks. It's literally a waste of my time and I don't have a lot of time. So I've had to, now I just nicely, I had one yesterday. I had to email them. They didn't respond back, (laughs) but I just have to nicely say, you know, I'm not outsourcing HR right now. I appreciate that. Or, you know, I just renewed my insurance. Thank you so much. You know, I appreciate that, but having boundaries and I don't need to be everywhere and doing everything. You yeah. know, yeah, and just being able to say to say no. Yeah, you're, you're a people person. Yeah, I, I couldn't we like. Tell, I couldn't tell at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to be everywhere, but then like yeah. last year, mm-hmm. like March and April, my my son was in kindergarten and he was having a really rough few months, like really rough. And I remember I was in Golden for a meeting and I get a call from the school like you need to come pick him up. It's like eleven thirty in the morning. I'm like. I just got to a meeting. I'm in golden. Like it, and it was stressing me out. I was getting calls almost daily. This poor child was not okay. And finally I'm like, you know what? Cancel some of these meetings. I don't need to go to all these networking things. I don't need to be there unless it's absolutely necessary of like, it will earn me a huge client that I want or really, really important. I, I pulled back like quite a bit because he needed me. You know, and I think that's the beauty of it. You own your time. So if something's not working, pull it back, make it work for you, your family, and the business will be fine. And it did. I had my busiest year ever last year, you know, but I don't know. It's, it, you have to give yourself permission to pull it back if if it's not working. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> what have been some of the the struggles? <laughs> Oh, there's all kinds. I mean, one thing I know you'll get this. So like starting a business operating capital is a little scary at first. Yeah. Um, and construction, you know, I build net 30, but 60, 90 days out, sometimes a lot of times there are thousands and thousands of dollars still hanging out there. Right. So this, this chapter in my book, I said that time I almost sold my soul to a bank. Is the paints or roof on your home or business starting to look a little shabby? If so, reach out to one of our sponsors, M&D Painting and Roofing. M&D Painting and Roofing is a full-service residential and commercial painting and roofing contractor in Northern Colorado. And full disclosure, I'm the M in M&D. Check them out at mandepainting.com. Are you a small business trying to navigate all of the landscape of digital marketing and don't know where to go? Reach out to one of our sponsors, Imprint Digital. They are the go-to source for all things digital marketing. They are the producers of this podcast and they run all of the marketing for all of my companies. Check them out at imprint-digital.com. Really kind of scary. I I thought at the beginning that I needed a lot like a SBA loan or I needed funding or an investor just to have operating capital to like make myself feel more secure having that. So I, I went through like five, six banks, whatever. And I remember the last, they'd be like, oh, we'll give you 200 grand, but we need 60 grand cash. I'm like, well, if if I had that, I just use that. I don't, you know what I mean? It it was just all this weird stuff. And then the last bank, I was so desperate at that point. 
feeling like I had to get external funding that they were like, we'll give you 250 grand. You have to move all your personal banking, all your business banking, all your personal investments to us. And the kicker was I was until April of 2022, I actually worked that other job, full-time office manager job and built my company little crazy. Just going to say wow, a lot of so late nights and tears. I was full, full time, yeah, double full time, a double full time yeah. for years. And, um, this last bank almost, uh, one of the stipulations was that I had to work that full-time job until, or I couldn't quit it until my company showed six months consecutive of 15 grand profit or more per month, per month, per month for six for months, six months. Okay. I'm sorry, but for a startup, that's, it, that would have been, I mean, I almost sold my soul to the bank and had them yeah. in charge of my life. That's terrifying to me. And weirdly, God was looking out for me because I, I was chomping at the bit to get this done. And there kept being delay, delay, delay. Like God was like delaying it on purpose. And then finally I'm laying in bed and I like, what the hell am I doing? Oh my God. I like, they're going to run my life, you know? And I was, and I finally was like, no, no, I can't do this. So I just, I went and got, I got pulled money out from my house. I'm like, cause I don't have to answer to anyone. I can do whatever the hell I want with it. There we go. Fixed. So your, so your startup capital was you pulling off like yep. a HELOC? Yeah. HELOC. Yeah. It was awesome. great. And it was so much easier. Yeah. And I had a bunch of equity in my house. I was like, okay, great. I only answer to myself as it should be. Yeah. Love and it. I tried to get investors too. And they'd like, I'd spend thousands of dollars and they'd pull out at the last minute or the last one came back to me like, oh, well, we're in the like 11th hour. And he came back and he's like, well, um, yeah, send me that other document. And then I had another company like come to me and they're going to offer me more. So I'm going to give you first right of refusal. I'm like, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Like, and if I, it took me a long time to realize actually you can do this on your own. Like I did it on my own. I don't need anyone's help like that. Did you, did you just think you needed I think other I help? thought I did. Did. You, did you not know? Did you not believe in yourself? Was it, was it knowledge? Was it belief? Was it a little bit? Probably of both? both. I mean, I think it's just scary when you're, you know, I pay my employees weekly. I pay them well, and it's, that's a lot of money, you know? And I think it was just in the early days, I would have to go pull money out of that, uh, out of that loan each week. Now it's been a long time since I've done that, yeah. but I, it, I think it was just the fear of it. Like, Oh gosh, there's not a lot of money in the, in the checking account right now. Mm -hmm. And I got to make payroll. I got to do, you know, it probably was just belief. And now yeah. I've proven I don't need them. I actually did it. And it's mine. And I, you know, I don't attribute the success of it to them. It's, I worked for it. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. that are working a full-time job and mm -hmm. wanting to start a business or they have started a business. I've got a great friend <clears throat> right now and he's, he's like right at that point, he's mm -hmm. been 30 years in a secure job, six figures, and he loves his business, Yeah, but he just it's hard. hasn't jumped ship. So yeah. how did you do that? When did you decide to do that? Take me through that. Cause there's mm -hmm. an overlap there. You had there was two years, first two yeah. years, right? 21, yeah. 22. Yeah. You're still full time in it. So when mm -hmm. did you jump? How did you do that? Yeah, I think so. Really, it was just talking to my husband, like, can we make this work? Um, and really, luckily, we he got a new job and we're, we looked at each other. We're like, can we do this? Because I'm like, I'm in hell. This I can't do this. I am like so spread thin. This other company was like a freaking shit show mess, unorganized. Now we're explicit, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> told you, Did told you we were going to go 20 <laughs> yeah. minutes in. Love it. <laughs> you know, like, like I just, it showed me how not to run a business really quickly. I was like, what is happening? And it, I mean, I, it's funny. Um, I would wake up every day, like knowing the call was going to come from the boss with the next thing, the next crazy chaos for the day. Yeah. And it was horrible. It was putting out fires. I'm like, how are you even still in business? I don't even know. But when I quit and started running just my company for literally for months, I would wake up with that kind of anxiety waiting for that call. But then I'm like, oh, I'm the boss. It's not getting it. I'm, I, now you're making the call. I am right? making the call and I, yeah. I'm not creating fires every day to put out. You know, it's, I'm doing things differently. 
so you don't have to put out fires every day. And, and how do you avoid that? Because I know that you're that you you're that real forward driving, mm-hmm. outgoing personality mm-hmm. style. And I know the the entrepreneurial mindset. There's a little bit of chaos to it. And for oh, yeah, me, there like, is. we get a vision, get an idea, and I'll just go implement it right mm-hmm. away. And like the team just got something else implemented or stabilized. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, here's another idea. Like, Does let's start did. a coffee bar. Let's start another business. So are you good at reining that back or processing through that? Or what do you do? Because you have so many things going on. Yeah. They started, I'm assuming, right, with an idea and a vision. Yeah. But how have you, or have you just launched them all kind so of simultaneously? I don't have a team. Um, so it's just me and all my crazy ideas running around. Um I have a million sticky notes. I have a million lists, to-do lists that I merge (laughs) and, you know, make them look good. It's just, I think I really just go with my gut and what feels good. I, I know right away if, you know, I'm not trying to push stuff that doesn't feel good. And so I try to just prioritize like, okay, what do I need to do now? And how do I move the needle? What are the biggest things right now that will grow my business. And for me, for my business, I know this is you too. It's all about relationships. It really is. I, that's how I get business word of mouth referrals and meeting when I meet people out and we talk about life and like, Oh, you're from South Dakota too. Cool. Oh, you, you know, your kid plays hockey too. You know, that's how people want to be interacted with. They, we don't even need to talk business, you know, and I know they know I got them and we just like each other. Yeah. Yeah. The relationship, the business. Totally. Yeah. it. It really does. Love it. Where, what's, what's the vision with it? Cause you've got, you've got the construction company, mm-hmm. but now you've got your personal brand website looks awesome. <laughs> Thank we were you. talking offline. Like we're never, That's, we're never totally happy with our brand. That's on my list. And our Go home and <laughs> but, but yeah. where do you want to take that? You got a book, mm-hmm. you got a book out podcast mm-hmm. uh, message speaking yep. to women. Do you want to just influence <laughs> women focusing on women or what, I what think, where are you going with it? I think my niche is women. Um, like, I don't know. I think I just connect with them. One thing for me, women, like, let's say during COVID, I remember I went on Facebook one night. I was like 11, I was working in my office at 11 at night. I was still working those two jobs. I was, I just went on Facebook and like cried and rambled for like 20 minutes about like, this sucks. I'm not crafting and napping. And like, I'm, this is horrible. Uh, You know, like just being crazy. And so many women were like, Oh my God, thank you for being real. So women, I think are just drawn to me being like, here I am. I'm a mess, but I'm trying my best. And I just want to be genuine and authentic. Um, so really, yes, my, my book is out, you know, into the world. Um, I'm just excited about that, but I, I definitely want to ramp up speaking and be like keynote speaking. I'm speaking, um, at Amberly Lago. I don't know if you know her. She, I'm in a mastermind with her. She's amazing and check her out. Her story is amazing. But um, I'm speaking at her Unstoppable um, Success Summit in Dallas, you know, different things. So that's, I'm kind of hoping this year with my book being out and sharing stories that I'm, I'm speaking more on larger stages. I will start my podcast this year. So those are kind of like the two things. And then, you know, but still building the construction company. Um, but I've, I've put a lot of time and money and investment into all this stuff. So I'm kind of now putting it out there and see where it goes. I'm, I'm open to where it goes. And maybe, yeah. maybe there's something coming that I never even thought of or knew that it was even out there or I wanted to do, but it's going to maybe come my way yeah. through people I'm meeting or whatever. So yeah, I'm open to it. I'm, I'm just excited about like, I feel called now to share my message and share my story because people are relating to it. Yeah. What, um, how do you, how do you balance all of the business with family? Cause yeah. you've got a husband, yeah. two kids. Oh, yep. <laughs> and you said your, your son you called him the honey badger. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. He's, I don't know if you've seen that video on YouTube. Uh, which, you need to watch it. You'll one? just watch, just Google honey badger on YouTube. Okay. It's like the funniest you're going to laugh. And that is my child. Okay. He's sweet. He, uh, when he was two and a half he, during COVID, he got naked, scaled a five foot wooden fence and ran away. And I got a picture from my neighbor saying of his little naked butt walking down the sidewalk, like you got a streaker. And I'm in my office working. I'm like, oh my God, he escaped again. He's hanging out in Castle he Rock. He escaped just going again, the just walking. Like I'm, it was like, what is happening? The other, like a few months ago, he bought a $1,500 dirt bike on Amazon. And again, I'm working. I'm like, What's, what did I buy on Amazon? I got the email. Oh yeah, no, I know exactly who that was. You know, so it was with your money or his money. Yeah, it was with my money, but okay. I'm like, and okay. delete. And he's like, when's it coming? I'm like, it's not. 
<laughs> it's not coming. You know, like he's just does crazy stuff. So he keeps me on my toes, my other sons and all these sports. And, you know, um, it's, it's not easy juggling at all, but I, I really try to bust it out when they're at school and work. And I'm like, I, I work really well at home alone. Some people are like, I can never do that. I work really good. I, I try to get everything done. And like last night I was working late. Cause you know, I have all this other stuff to tie up. So sometimes I'm up, I wake up early naturally on a Sunday at 6am, just having coffee, finishing, you know, working on catching up yep. in my office, but it's, it's hard, but you have to prioritize it. Right. Like, and, and as much as it, I'm not perfect at it, when I'm with the family, I try to turn it off and, and be there, you know, but in seasons of life, like right now, I'm really, really busy with all this extra stuff. So it's, it's bit, the balance isn't as good right now, to be honest, yeah. but it will come back. You know what I mean? And, and, and really it's just the quality of time you spend when you are with them. What are you doing to make memories and have, you know, make it really good. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> it is. There's always, and there's always something to do. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Got, like you never to have a to-do list that just is turn done. it off. Yeah. You could be constantly working. Like I'll, I'll be wandering. I qu quit watching TV randomly, like not even a goal. I just quit watching it. Cause I'm always like doing something. And, and then at like eight 30 at night, I'm like wandering around the house. And my husband's like, Hey babe, you want to like come sit and relax for a bit? I'm like, Oh, I guess I could do that. Or I could just go to bed. Half the time I go to bed, I go yep. to bed by nine. I'm exhausted. And I get up at five 30. I go to the gym, yep. you know, cause I have to start my day like that way. Cause that's my phone starts ringing at seven. Is your husband working in the business or is he, he still working his job? Um, he, Oh no, he's not involved in the company. He works okay. actually in construction, but he does business development for a large general contractor. Okay. So he's like brunching, lunching, golfing, you know, out of all the happy hours, which is fun, but it's exhausting. As you know, when you're having, to, when you're gone till 10 at night for events and stuff, who, you know, it, and you do it like two, three times a week, like it's cool, but it's exhausting, but he's so, it's like so good for his personality. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned before we were starting the podcast, talk, mm -hmm. talking offline, just gone through a lot of adversity mm -hmm. in life. So like, yeah. what was your upbringing? What was your childhood? Yeah. Like, how did, you know, talk about some of those yeah. challenges that you've overcome Yeah, and, you know, give, give that inspiration to people that are listening. Cause I know that's part of, I mean, that's really For your, sure. your message is like For you've sure. gone through a lot of stuff and yeah. somebody else is probably going through mm -hmm. what you've gone through. Yeah. So really my, my childhood was pretty, it was a charmed childhood. I, my parents got divorced when I was three. My dad lived six hours away, but really like my dad, my mom, my mom and stepdad have been remarried like 35 years. And so my dad and stepdad walked me down the aisle. Like we've all vacationed together. They're the freaking best. And it, truly I couldn't ask for a better situation. I love them. Um, there's kind of two biggest stories of adversity I've overcome. So one, and, and I like to share these two because also it shows how different I was in, in going through it because I was at two totally different stages of life. So if you've got junk in your life or business that you need removed, reach out to one of our sponsors, Hulk Addicts. They are a full service junk removal company and they'll be able to take care of you at your home or your business to get rid of whatever you don't want. Check them out at hulkaddictsjunk.com. If you're a Christian small business owner, you have to check out one of our sponsors, the Foundry Advisory. They are a Christian peer advisory community here in Northern Colorado and the Front Range that is designed to give you encouragement, support, and insight to grow your business with other like-minded Christian business owners. Not only are they a sponsor and a partner of this podcast, but I'm also a member of their community. Check them out at thefoundryadvisory.com. As a small business owner, one of the things we will always need to address is a space to run our business. If you're looking to do a small tenant finish, maybe even build a building from the ground up, you've got to reach out to one of our sponsors, Mendel Construction. They are a full service commercial contractor that can take care of your business needs to build the space and place of your dreams to run your business. Check them out at mendelandcompany.com. About 20 years ago, I was in Ecuador in South America. I was studying, I had gone one year for a month with um, a professor and a group from my university, studied, like loved it. It changed my life. And then I decided to come back and double major. So I, then I returned the following year by myself for three months and I knew people, I still studied at that school and it was great. And then um, one 
day I wake up and I am on a dirty mattress on the floor in an abandoned house. And my professor, one of my professors from the school had drugged me and raped me and brought me to this house and then left me there alone. And in a foreign country, like I could have been killed. I was so sick. I was so sick. I remember just like throwing up and like looking up and he's, you know, like there. And it, I mean, it was just horrible. And so I wake up, I try, they have these really heavy like metal doors and I was trying to get out. I was getting electrocuted for like 30 minutes. I couldn't get out, finally get out. I grabbed a taxi because now it's like, let's say a Thursday, let's say, and I have to go to school and I don't know where I'm at. So I lit, I just, took a taxi back to school and I had to look him in the face and act. And I never told a soul for 20 years. Hold on. Hold on. Holy shit. Yeah. Sorry. It's crazy. Yeah. I know um, it's freaking insane. This is your, your professor, the professor d down there at this at the academia in Quito, Ecuador. Yes. And I think he, you're in class. Yeah. With. Yeah. He drugs you. Yep. Where were you when do you so, know where you were? Yeah, we like, it's kind of weird down there. They have, you know, they have all these groups of students come from all over the world. So when a group of students is leaving, everybody goes out to the bar to like say bye. And weirdly the week before I saw him making out with a student that was leaving. And I remember being like, that's weird. And all the admin was, were there like watching him and he's married with kids. Like it's just, there's a definitely a machismo thing down yeah. there. It's really sad. But, um, so I, he just does that. He like prays. He's a predator on these girl students coming in and it's really crazy. So you, you guys are out at the bar mm -hmm. and I don't remember anything else and then you wake until up I'm in, in a room. Well, I'm in this room, like keep blacking out and there's like, he's there and there's somebody else there trying to touch me. And I said, no, but, and I don't, I like, it was so, I blacked out so much cause I was so ill whatever they drugged me with. Yeah. It was crazy. So sorry. Thank you. Holy I mean, cow. it's, and it's just to me, I literally shoved that down, locked it, threw away the key. The fact that I didn't, and I was in my twenties, the fact that I didn't tell, I didn't go tell the teacher. I didn't go tell the principal. I'd never told my parents. I didn't tell anyone for 20 years. Like to me, that's, that's really messed up. But like, and I, it's like I pretended it never happened maybe because I knew I could have died and I'd be, they'd find my dead body in a foreign country. Like what the hell, you know, as a parent, that's terrifying. Um, and so I didn't tell anyone. And I just, now that I wrote about it in my book and I'm like, Oh shit, I got to tell people now. <laughs> now now it's, it's out there. Yeah. yeah. And it, but it's like, why did I, did I feel shame? Did I feel guilt? Did, I mean, I, it wasn't, I didn't do it, but there's so many people out there that have gone through things like that, that have never said anything about it. And I didn't, I didn't heal from it. I didn't do anything. Okay. So now my, the next story to show like how different of a person I am and I know now what I need. So the, it ended in December of 23, but I was in a two and a half year lawsuit, which was the most soul sucking horrific experience I've ever gone through. Actually, it was worse than the physical rape because I felt violated. I lived in fear. I was absolutely sick to my stomach, terrified being attacked day after day for two and a half years. Like truly that was by far worse. And this having the construction business, uh, just like me personally, or a personal lawsuit. Okay. Kind of. Yeah. And it's like, and, and it was just a bunch of lies. Like it was absolutely the stuff you're like, oh my God. And to have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to like, and I have all this evidence. I'm like, here we go. This, none of this is true here. I, here we go. Uh, but ha you know, to go through it for two and a half years to have my kids be like, mom, when are we losing our house? Mom, here's $12. You could use this more than I could to I'm waking up in hives. I'm waking up in the middle of the night. Like, oh my God, it's not a dream. This is real. I, I was so bad mentally that I, uh, one day I'm like texted my, a friend who's a therapist. I'm like, you know, money's tight right now. I don't, I don't have a lot of money for therapy, but I'm not okay. And she's like, babe, I got you. She gave me some really, yeah. and I, I was like, 
I need a therapist. I need to stop drinking. I need to go work out. I need to get out in the sunshine. I need to eat healthier because, and I just need to chill out and not go to those meetings because I'm not okay. And I don't, I didn't want to go out and be like, Hey everybody. And it's fake smile slapped on. And it's like, I am so miserable, but yeah, it was hard. Like so hard. But, but just to know, Hey, I'm not okay. I'm yeah. Tell everybody, I'm I remember okay. the day. I literally yeah. remember the day. I was like, Ooh, this is bad. I like, I, I didn't want to die, but I didn't want to live. Like I was like, I don't know how I can keep going through this. Yeah. And, and was that, I mean, obviously that's a build a building thing, but yeah. what was that moment where you're just like, I'm not okay. It just, it, it kept like weirdly, like it started as one thing the lawsuit did. And then it kept, they kept adding more, more ridiculous crap. And it, it's just like every time you're like, are you freaking joking? Like, and at one point it was millions of dollars. Th- so that you're I was personally being, su- being sued? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like, is it all settled? Well, now it, I, I wrote a, a check to settle in December of 23 because okay, so just what I had trial. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's ridiculous. The lawyers are like, well, you know, I mean, I know I've paid hundreds of thousands of dollars and they're like, well, if we go to trial, that'll be another 300,000. So I'm like, but I have all this evidence. I have all, I, I want to fight this. Like if I settle, that means I feel, I feel like that means they win. He's like, no, it doesn't mean they win, but you're just saving yourself from paying all these trial expenses. And then you're at the mercy of a jury that who knows, they might see all your evidence and still believe them who knows. And then you could go bankrupt and you could literally lose everything. And it's like, at that point, I need my life back. I need my happiness back. And it was such this weird weight lifted off me that I'm like, oh my God, I, it had like seeped into me and become part of me. And like the anger and the sadness and the depression and the heaviness. I mean, it was just horrible. And I'm not that person. Like I'm positive and like hopeful person in general. And so then I was like, oh my God, I have like my old weirdly happy light life back. Like, I don't even know what to do with my, it felt weird. Like I don't need to live in fear every day. This is crazy. So, so that moment you're like, Hey, I'm not okay. Yeah. Therapist. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of money right now, Yeah, but I need some therapy. Yeah. What, what else did you do or what else would you recommend to somebody that's in that spot? The reason I asked, we had a gentleman on here, John Holston, if you watched his episode, he said that exact same thing. He Uh, said, I I didn't want to kill myself, but I didn't didn't want to live. live. It's Yeah. And it's explain that or maybe, yeah. uh, you know, somebody going through that. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I've never experienced that feeling and it is, it's not like I'm plotting to kill myself, but like, it is so unbearable going through that. You're like so emotionally exhausted and you're like, I don't even know how I can get there. I was like such a jerk to my kids sometimes. Cause I would get a text or get an email and, Oh, here you have to provide thousands more documents yet again. I'm like, God damn it. I'm running a freaking business. I have shit to do. And yet again, with all the, to, to, you know, just prove all this crap that's said about me, I have to spend hours and hours and hours yet again doing this. And so it was like flowing over and I'm like, kids, I'm sorry, boys. Like I, mommy has had, I mean, they know I'm going through, but there were some days that I get a text and start crying and they're like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm okay. It's I'm sorry. It's not about you. And I, I'm sorry. I'm cranky. I know I am. And I'm sorry. Like, you know, I try to just be real, but and not like I'm sitting talking in depth about it to them, but they can sense what's happening, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. You, you had compared the two events, mm-hmm. uh, the experience in Ecuador yep. and then the lawsuit and then mm-hmm. you had, you had handled it differently yeah, in different persons. Totally different. So, I mean, obviously the first one I didn't, didn't do, talk about that no. at all. Yeah. And then that had to come back up at some point. So how, cause, cause I've experienced mm-hmm. things yes. where i haven't said anything. I just shared something with Emily, like literally recently when I was eight. Yeah. She's like, Oh shit, you should probably talk about that. Right. Well, I didn't. Now we are. So how, how did that come about? Yeah. Like, did you, did you just ignore it so much? And, and cause there's like all the shame and Mm -hmm. everything, you just park it away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's there or did you totally forget it's there? Yeah. So I, I think in the two situations, were time, there were times that I felt powerless that somebody else took away my power. Right. And, and, um, I didn't think of the Ecuador situation for so many years, like didn't even cross my mind. It was real deep buried in there. 
And then the last few years I'd be laying in bed and it'd pop into my mind and I'd find myself being like, why did you put yourself in that situation? Why did I started like trying to beat myself up over it? And I'm like, no, but a, but it was like coming to the surface a little. And I was like, that's weird. Why is it? And I guess it was just that I was meant to put it out in the book and talk about it and, you know, and speak about it because people have gone through a lot of stuff like that. And yeah, it's, we, there's so much shame and guilt and embarrassment around it, but that's like by society, but the world needs people to step up and say, actually, this happened to me. And look, I even, I'm okay. I made it through and I'm way stronger on the other side, but now I need to use my voice to help other people that maybe haven't healed from it or, or aren't do, aren't thriving right now. They're living in it. Maybe they're an alcoholic because they can't get that out of their mind. You know, there's so many ways you, you could turn to positive habits to dig through, or I could have easily turned to the negative stuff for sure. For both situations. Do you ever want to go back to Ecuador and find that guy? <laughs> oh yeah. My uh, husband and my mom both said they want to go murder him. <laughs> okay. Oops. Well, we're probably going to want to cut not, that. We should probably cut that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, well, again, I am I don't sorry ever that happened go. and I'm, I'm proud of you for share, sharing Thank that you. story and using that to, to impact lives and, Thank and, you. and change lives. I will say I have been back to Ecuador since in a full, full circle kind of moment. Um, so, oh gosh, a few years ago, I took students down there and we did like a service trip. So really I do love the country. I love the people. Like it's incredible. It's dear to my heart. Like Spain is to you. Right. Yeah. So it was really cool to end. I've been there three times to end that ex, you know experience with really positive, like giving back to communities and doing stuff like that and getting kids from, you know, the burbs that are like middle and high class families going down to seeing people that have absolutely nothing and opening their eyes to it. So I did go back and it was, it was really incredible, like kind of a good, like positive ending to, to that era of my life. Wow. So the study, the study abroad experience, mm-hmm. not to change the topic oh, too no, much, but that, that impacted you, impacted you quite a bit. Mm-hmm. How, how is how have some of those experiences translated into dealing with just the uncertainty and the stress and the chaos of business? But what did you take from, from study abroad from being just there? in I've, general? I've noticed a few things. Yeah. And I'm curious yeah. if you did too. Yeah. I mean, I, the weird things happened down there. I mean, like I got all my money, passport, driver's license stolen once. I didn't know until I was on the bus and I didn't have any money to pay. And there's this little old man sitting next to me and in Spanish, I'm like, crying. I'm like, sir, can you pay my bus thing? You know, there were times. So then I had to go to the embassy and get all that stuff back. And if, if you're like me, when you see an American embassy, you think of the movies that people are like running through, you know, and they're through the gates. They are. And they're like safe. Okay. So I'm in the embassy and the alarms start going off to evacuate. And I'm like, wait, what? this is my safe place. And there had been an anti George W. Bush rally right outside and they, so then they wanted to, us to evacuate and I'm like blonde. So I, kids would like look at me and scream and run away there because they're all like dark hair and they would touch my hair and you know, they thought I was like a monster. <laughs> yeah. You definitely st- in, in, stand in out. Part of the and then I'm like, yeah. wait, so I have to leave here and go out into an anti George W. Bush rally. And it was a peaceful thing, but I'm like, no, I should be able to stay in this safe embassy. Right. Yep. I'm just random stuff like that. I, you know, you, you learn like, Oh, it's, you know, stuff could go wrong. Like it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And when's the last time you've been back there? <clears throat> um, it was probably like 2017 ish. Okay. If I had to guess. Yeah. What year were you there? Um, the first two years were like 2003 and four. Okay. Cause I was in Spain in 2002. Okay. Yeah, so right about, yeah. right about that same time. Yeah. Did you live with a family? Um, I lived with a few different host families. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Super cool. Yeah. But it's just, I mean, and even this last time I had almost more culture shock coming back after I took students down there. Cause we were in like the parts where it was there. These families are living in the jungle with like literally nothing, you know, a shack of a house, no electricity, no running water. And I remember coming back and just sitting in my house and being like, Hmm. They're either going to think this is, if they were here, they'd be like, wow, this is really cool. Or I'm like a little embarrassed. Like I, I just felt like I'm kind of a jerk. Like look at all these beautiful things I have. And I don't live in this massive mansion, but my home is beautiful. Right. But 
it, it was like, oh my God, I have running water to brush my teeth. Well, they didn't. They have to go through the jungle eight times a day and get it from this tiny little stream. And yep. the, all the kids have parasites in their bellies because they are drinking contaminated river water. You know, it, it was just, I felt like an asshole. I was like, hmm. But you, and you, while you could do that, you, you need to go out and show people how other people in the world live and inspire them to spread kindness, spread positivity. And that's things I can do on my end. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to yeah. feel bad about it. I just need to get people looking at the world and understanding and be, you know, just changing their mindset. Riley and I went to uh, Kenya last year. Oh, wow. And it was the same thing. I mean, we went out to mm -hmm. uh, the slums of Nairobi and mm -hmm. did these, these projects. And there are these three, four, five, 10 story buildings, mm -hmm. concrete buildings, no running water. Yeah. And the families lived in 10 by 10. And it's this room, mm -hmm. concrete walls, concrete mm -hmm. floors. That's the house, yeah. you know, and we're carrying $15 bags of like flour and rice and just basic mm -hmm. necessities to go to these homes of yeah. these families and just, they're so grateful. They're so happy and you know? sweet, right? Yeah. Just like, going out, yeah. spending time with yeah. them. Um, and, but again, at the, like at the end of the day, talking about, Hey, their kids in school and this is what they're studying. Yeah. It's like, we're just people, people at the end of the day, totally. but, but yeah, you come back and it's like, wow. Um, mm -hmm. like our, our pantry mm -hmm. in our house. Yeah. You're like, they'd kill they, for this. They'd love it. Yeah. So it's that perspective, but no, I've, I've had that. Yeah. And it's like, man, should we just sell, sell everything and move, move over there? Right. Like, right. Get, get I know. Back through the heads I know. Like, how can you, how can you, how can you go love people? Exactly. People? You can't feel bad about what you've been how, given what you, or where you're exactly. at. You know? Like yeah. that's, that's not, that doesn't do any good. And, and I, I remember this one boy, he was like, every night we would go, um, like debrief and talk about it. And, uh, one night he was like, I was like, what do you think of today? And he's like, well, the problems we think we have aren't problems. Like I, if I don't have the newest iPhone or whatever, this or that, like it doesn't even matter it, like in life, but we're taught here. Oh, that matters. I need to have the f nicest car and oh, this or that, that, you know, it really doesn't. So I, I really hope that those kids that they will always remember feeling that way and going out to be a good person. Right. And, yeah. and knowing, cause like when, when I'm at home and the Wi-Fi is like not working, my husband's like, Oh my gosh. I'm like, first world problems. I don't yeah. care. Like really honey, it's fine. It'll be fine. It'll come on back in one minute. Chill. You know what I mean? I'm like, Oh my God. It's, but we've, we've become accustomed to this is how we live. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's very powerful. I, I hope to take my kids abroad in, in similar situations to have them give back and, and see how people live so they can appreciate what they have. Yeah. Right. Riley came back and was like, thanks dad. Like that's ha such a great trip. And, oh I mean, my gosh. Points where he was like, he was out there the, cause it was a father son trip. We mm, were with a restoration okay. project. So the dads were off doing stuff and the kids were off yeah. with the, the kids there running around yeah. all, all day. And that's just figuring, so cool. figuring it out. It He'll really never cool. forget that. That's yeah. like, yeah, yeah that's we're, amazing. We're shooting to do Costa Rica this, oh, this year with cool. the same kind of the same group. Very the same cool. Kind of trip. So yeah, really I cool. I love that. What, what else haven't you shared yet that you'd like to share? We're getting like close to our time. Oh, we'll we could chat forever. We're going to have to do another episode because <laughs> so many, so many things. I mean, we could dive deep into so many more of these things. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, my book is out. I, I hope people read it and find inspiration. If you love it, please review it, share it with people that yeah. just share with people that are real, that appreciate honesty and, you know, being a genuine person. Um, yeah, my website, chelseahewsome.com. Well, I'll probably post all the stuff coming up on there, any info and things like that. But I really appreciate, you know, you letting me come on here and hopefully share some value with your listeners Absolutely. and you always are sharing great value with them. So thank you. Well, it's been forever. We've been, we've been busy. Yeah. We've I know. <laughs> Cause we started talking about this, I think last year. Yeah, last I think year. we did. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll, and we'll link all this up too on the show notes. Oh, cool. So this will yeah. all, all yeah. be out there. You uh, wrote something on your card. So we wrap up I did. this podcast same way. You mm -hmm. came to the leave your mark wall, pick your mm -hmm. favorite color I love that. and your statement that you're going to leave with the world when you leave it. Yep. What is it? It is nothing can break you. Go out and go out and shine your light. Love it. Thanks for being here. Thank you That's so much. Hey, thanks for tuning into this week's episode. Would you make sure to please like comment and subscribe to the channel here and please share this episode with somebody whose life it will make better. Are you a faith-based father and you wanna have the adventure of a lifetime with your son? You have to check out 
the father-son hike of a lifetime on the Camino de Santiago in Spain. June of 2025, I'm going to be taking a small group of fathers and sons over to Spain. We are going to spend six days, hike 70 miles, have some of Spain's most amazing cuisines, see some of the most beautiful places and spaces, but most importantly, spend time together bonding with our sons. If you're interested in this adventure, check out mattshaup.com. When you get to the website, click the Gentle Art of Leadership button and hover down to the father-son hike of a lifetime.